The literate selected few in a community have the chance to be trained in areas such as primary examination and treatment. As it turned out, the approach proved effective in helping ease health problems among the populace living in remote areas. It did some good health-wise, but the effect cannot be felt immediately. On the other hand, we can control things. The approach still continues along the guideline His Majesty has initiated. We know it under the project entitled Village Health Volunteer Unit. The criterion is one volunteer for every 15 households. In the beginning, we needed iron lungs. Just imagine, the things had to be imported. We did not know how to invent one. As it was an emergency case, His Majesty graciously allotted an amount from his personal fund for the purchase of such iron lungs or other respiratory equipment of the kind to be primarily installed at Silirat Hospital. It was hydrotherapy. We had had to rely on pumping machine to revive different parts of the body muscles in the limbs. A forceful stream of water was directed right at these muscles. The project required quite a large budget allocation. On His Majesty's initiative, the programs broadcast on his own radio broadcasting station at Ampon Villa were interrupted at intervals by announcements appealing for public donations for the polio relief fund set up for the treatment and acquisition of medical equipment. His Majesty also allotted additional funding for the Wajira Longon Hydrotherapy Centre. Leprosy was spreading among people in marketplaces and such. There was an instance of a beautiful schoolgirl in Konken province. In her final year in high school, the finger joints started to fall off one by one because leprosy was acting up. In the end, only the stump of her hands and feet remain. The Director General of the Department of Health at the time briefed His Majesty on a 12-year leprosy eradication campaign. His Majesty inquired if the campaign could be accelerated. The answer was positive, but only after a research institute had been established, training courses set up for the officials and staff concerned, and research on leprosy conducted. With the support from both Germany and Japan then, the project could be completed within eight years. His Majesty immediately granted funding from his personal purse to speed up the campaign. That was Rajpracha Samasai Research Institute. The name given by His Majesty came into being. His Majesty went by boat to preside over the foundation stone laying ceremony. The location was inaccessible by road at the time. There was mention of the name Wat Glang Suan, out there in Prapadang. Even the monks shivered when the disease was mentioned. They would not allow leprosy doctors to enter the temple ground. Two years passed. The construction of Radpracha Samasai Research Institute was completed. Again, His Majesty declared that he intended to preside over the building inauguration in person. The monks had a positive rethink. They recalled that the king had come by boat which moored at the Chao Priya river bank and walked there to lay the foundation stone and then back again to the boat. Now that the institute was ready for the inauguration by His Majesty, the monks joined efforts to build a road and invited His Majesty to use it, as well as to graciously inaugurate it. Finding out that His Majesty was going to attend the ceremony in person, doctors could not help being concerned for his health. They were afraid he might catch the infection through the presence of leprosy patients in attendance at the institute. You might want to ask if His Majesty was put off by the lepers' presence, with their rough skin, physical disfigurement and such. All I want to say is, if His Majesty had minded, he would not have come. Yet 
His Majesty's venture that day not only served as a good example for the general public in that it directed people's attention to the attitude people should have towards lepers. It is also illustrated His Majesty's support for physical therapy and plastic surgery after the patients had been completely cured. On that same occasion, His Majesty learned that the children he saw running about were children of leprosy patients. Astonished, His Majesty asked, don't they go to school? The answer was no. No school would accept them. These children had been rejected. Asked about the possibility of setting up a school for them, they told me it was not in their area of concern to set up a school for lepers' children. The matter should be handled by the Ministry of Public Health. Needless to say, it was an instance of endlessly shifting responsibility onto others. His Majesty graciously granted one million baht from his own personal fund for the establishment of the school through Tanpuying Dusadi Mala Malakun. In the end, I myself had to assume the role of a flea, without which what should be done would not be done. What ensued was a school known under a non-suggestive name of Rajpracha Samasai School under the auspicious of Rajpracha Samasai Foundation. His Majesty was later recognized by the World Health Organization WHO for having enabled Thailand to effectively and successfully put leprosy under control. Along the way, there have been certain complaints as to why the royal initiated school for lepers' children is now solely admitting normal children. My answer is, that's exactly His Majesty's strategy. What good would it do if the school is still there but will not admit children of normal, healthy parents while leprosy in Thailand is a thing of the past? Nothing is impossible. Time will show. Her Majesty the Queen once wrote that originally His Majesty had consented to ascend the throne on an interim basis only, to make sure that the funeral rites for the late King Ananda Mahadon were carried out with due pomp and circumstance. But as it happened, it was the people's love and loyalty that had restrained His Majesty from leaving. Somebody shouted loudly, please do not forsake the people. Really, I wanted to shout back, if the people do not forsake me, how can I forsake them? <laughs> 